by the way, I'm, you know, I'm the new guy, so I still sort of do what I'm told. You know, next time I'm here, I, you may see me running off and, you know, following my own lead. But I was told as we were coming in here, I said, you know, where am I supposed to sit down? They're like, just sit, there's a, the Texas passport is in your, in, on your chair. And I'm like, okay, I didn't ask questions. And there literally is a Texas passport <laughs> on my chair. So perhaps you guys can uh, share with me a bit later what one actually uh, gets with this Texas passport. But I, I really am honored um, to have one now, uh, especially because my California driver's license expires next week. And I don't have one yet. Um, so that might be tough. Um, thank you so much, Kathy, um, for that introduction and um, the board members uh, who are here who hired me. Um, as I said to some of you yesterday, um, if, if you're impressed and, and I do a great job, I get all the credit. I, if I screw up and you're unhappy in these next few weeks, blame the board. Um, they hired me. Um, but I also want to thank Tim and Suzanne, our federal club co-chairs. Um, I also uh, want to thank HRC's volunteer uh, leadership as well as the Black Tie um, leadership who are here today. Thank you all so much. Dancing a little bit, I'm turning left and I'm turning right, um, and I can I can though see all of you. Um, but I do want to thank you for this this warm reception. I was. Um, told that there would be a good turnout for breakfast in Dallas, and I was like, oh, what does that mean? I'm having breakfast with eight or ten people, um, and little did I know that the turnout would be uh, so tremendous here. Um, and it really is great to be here uh, in Dallas, and I, I should say over the last two weeks, she said one of my, my first trips, it's actually great to be back again. Um, no one knows this, or maybe a couple of you do. Um, but you have the distinction of being the only community that I've already visited once, this is now my twice twice to visit Dallas in just my first 10 days uh, in office. Granted, the first time was last week um, as I was headed, headed to Arkansas, uh, and my flight was canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and so I flew to Dallas, um, landed at midnight last Sunday night, rented a car, and drove through the night uh, to get to Arkansas for my first official event. So that was sort of the welcome to HRC. You land, your flight's canceled, and you drive throughout the night. Um, but I will say, and I, I, my guess is this is something that some of you are familiar with, uh, to top it off while we were driving down I-30, somewhere near, I think, Sulphur Springs, uh, Texas. There's not a lot on the road as you go through that, you know. Um, so we were very careful not to speed. Um, but we did, at about 2.30 in the morning, uh, get to enjoy the warm hospitality of the Texas State Trooper. Um, he pulled us over. Uh, thankfully, he was a, a southern gentleman, and, and quite frankly, we never figured out why he pulled us over. Uh, he was very kind, very nice, in fact, quite handsome. Uh, <laughs> asked us uh, where we were going, we told him. Uh, he asked us to step out of the car, and we did so, and then he sent us on our way. Um, so that was my, my first few hours as HRC <laughs> president. And you know, this board, when they were recruiting me to, to, you know, to leave California, move across the country, there was a lot of you know, glamour and talked about all these amazing you know, dinners and black tie dinners. And so I'll tell you a few, um, other than the story I just told you, um, about some of my adventures on the road. Um, at this point, I've stayed at two Holiday Inn Expresses. How many of you in this room have stayed at a Holiday Express in the last year? Uh, there's a few hands. Um, so I learned, um, I learned that they do serve hot cinnamon rolls, Cinnabons, in fact, uh, early that morning uh, at the Holiday Inn Express. Um, I've also eaten dinner, in fact, on that same trip. Um, at a truck stop, uh, just after we were pulled over by the state trooper, uh, where it is, it is actually a true story. I had what we were convinced was weak old Krispy Kreme donut holes. Um, you know, they have those signs that say the next exit, that these restaurants and these gas stations, and we exit, and nothing was open. And every, every single, you know, I think people go to bed early in some of those small towns. Um, and then I was at, you know, one of these, these dinners. In fact, I was in Salt Lake City, and the staff and the team were taking me from table to table to meet everyone. And I approached uh, this one table and I was being introduced and this person uh, turned around and looked at me and said, excuse me, can you give me a vegetarian meal? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, those are just some of the joys when you hear about the glamour uh, of this job and these, uh, these dinners. So it, it really was, um, in, in all seriousness, uh, a fun trip, um, despite uh, the Texas State Trooper and, and the donut holes. Um, 
But on a serious note, I've also been deeply moved um, as I've traveled across the country, and I want to share uh, some of those stories with you because it was a re reminder for me um, exactly why um, I took this job um, and why we're moving across country um, and dedicating our lives to this organization. Um, and I've been able to travel to a group of diverse cities as I left Los Angeles and was headed to Washington and to meet volunteer leaders like you to get a sense of HRC's work and a better appreciation of the challenges and opportunities that our LGBT youth face day in and day out. I will never forget visiting the drop-in center for homeless youth in Salt Lake City with one of my heroes, Dr. Julian Bond, um, and getting to meet and have lunch with the homeless youth there. Um, and it was a homeless youth center, not an LGBT um, homeless center, but more than 40% of the homeless youth in the center were LGBT. Um, I will never forget some of those young people telling me why they come there, and that they come there to get food and basic survival necessities like a sleeping bag for the night. Um, they were kids, some as, old, some as old as 18, but some as young as 15 and 16. I was also deeply moved by the mother in Little Rock, Arkansas, who in front of a crowd of about 400 people was seated there on the front row, and as I was speaking, um, tears were streaming down her face, and she was a nurse, and she had taken her lunch break. Um, and when I stopped and started to take questions, she was the first person to stand up and, and raise her hand. Um, she talked about her son, Benjamin, who had attempted suicide twice after he had experienced bullying at school, and in some instances within his own family. And with the tears in her eyes, this mother painfully recounted Benjamin's story to include what she perceived as her own failures at protecting her son. And she asked me what could be done and how she could help prevent others from going through what her family is currently facing. I will never forget the 18-year-old young woman who stood up just after Benjamin's mom. And she lives a double life. When she's at home with her Pentecostal preacher father and mother, she goes by her given name of Alexandria and has one Facebook page. She traveled two hours to see me speak in a city far from her, from her home where she has a separate community of friends. There, when in Little Rock, she goes by an entirely different name. Her name there is Alice. She maintains complete separation, including a different Facebook page, so that her parents won't discover who she really is that she's a lesbian. They have disown her, she told me. I will also not soon forget the young Air Force sergeant who was kicked out of the military four years ago because of a discriminatory law, don't ask, don't tell. He came up to thank me for HRC's work on behalf of the repeal. And two weeks ago, he was allowed to re-enlist in the United States Air Force and is now proudly serving his country. We are here right now. There's another first happening in the country. Um, there's a wedding of a gay couple that are on an active duty military base in Fort Dix, New Jersey, who are about to be married by, the, for the first time, a military chaplain on their base. What progress. Just as I finished this event uh, in Arkansas, there was a gentleman who walked over and he was standing there as the reception ended. Um, he, he had his head down and he was on a cane, um, and he came over to me and I asked, how are you doing? And he said, not so good. And instead of describing to you what he said, I want to read to you the email that I got the next morning as I was leaving Arkansas and headed to Omaha. Dear Mr. Griffin, I want to thank you for talking with me at the Art Gallery reception in Little Rock, June 11th, your first day on the job as president of the Human Rights Campaign. You gave me some hope things might get better. I'm the 74-year-old man who just came out in October. <clears throat> Sorry for bleeding all over you with my troubles, but I think I represent a lot of older gay men who need help. You said to keep in touch and that you would not forget us older gay men, even though I agree that helping the young ones has to be a higher priority. He went on to ask what he could do and how he could stay in touch and how he could be connected uh, to leaders there uh, in his own community. And if Richard's words don't move you, 
I don't know what will. Over the course of five days, I literally met thousands of people with whom had traveled hours to meet me as the new HRC president. And I was deeply moved by that experience and those stories of joy and sorrow that I just described to you. And more importantly, by the power of this great organization to do good, to hear those stories knowing I was headed into the job of president of the Human Rights Campaign where you were able to see some of the great work and so many of you in this room, whoops, have supported for a long time. Um, and I can honestly say that this is truly the greatest honor of my life. Um, but with that honor also comes great responsibility. 